biggest secret to keeping friends is you being the friend you want to be. Now, every other thing I'm going to share, this is so broad that every other thing I'm going to share is going to, you know, just, you know, help out, you know, but just to butcher is my point. So number two is um, don't nag your friends. Meaning, a typical situation is um, your friend wants to borrow someone money and you know this person <laughs> will not pay back. But this person is just not nice when it comes to money. They never pay their debts. They never acknowledge they're owing you. Oh, if time is not taken, they will beat you up. <laughs> They'll beat you up over your own money. I tell you, the people like that. Ah, it's your money, but you're in trouble when you ask for that money. <laughs> if you ask for that money, you're in so, so, you've just gotten yourself into big trouble. Anyway, and then your friend is like, don't give that money. For instance, don't give that money. But you decide to still give the money because you're so nice, you're so sweet. Aww. You're so good. And you end up giving the money. And the friend had already told you, or your friend had already told you, don't give that money. But you did anyway. And I'm talking to the friend who had warned you. After finding out that the person is not paying back, now, don't be that friend that'll be like, I told you not to give and you gave. No, rather be the friend that'll be like, what do we do to get that money back? I know this person is just very tricky with money, but how do we go? What do we say? Or you be the, be the friend to say, just let this money go. Write it off. Just let it be a bad debt. Next time, if you know you can't give people the money for free, don't even borrow because you just put yourself under all of this pressure. Be that friend. Don't nag. I told you not to borrow her. I told you not to give him that car. You see what happened to the car. You see what he did to the car. He did it. You just go on and on and on. No, no, no. Because this person is human and this person knows they've made a wrong decision and they're paying for it. So don't go rubbing it. Don't go rubbing it and rubbing it. No, you said this. No, don't rub it in let it be instead be the comfort instead be the one to tell them you know what i know it was a bad choice mm -hmm. you shouldn't have but hey just let it go just no problem just let's find a way around it you feel better all right good so the next one that's number three is loyalty loyalty it's like faithfulness in the you know relationship between lovers it's like um and a sort of allegiance you know you're saying i am i am you know Given this, given this meaning, I trust you so much. I I stand by you. I believe strongly in you. Um, a situation where even when I'm offered something better, I will pick you. Even when I'm offered something better, I will pick you. I had such experience um, when I was starting up a TV show, The Round Table. I had such experience with um, a lady where... Um, I was supposed to work with a lady as a makeup artist and um, we started working and then I had to invite someone else, another artist, makeup artist on board. And this person wasn't really sort of cool with this other person, but um, I, I needed us to be very quick and fast, you know, aha. Uh -huh. I knew, but I just wanted us to be fast, quick, let's just do, do this thing together. And this person felt so bad that, oh, this person was on board, why? You know, that was one. I could handle everybody. And I, and I was like, oh, you can't handle everybody. That's one. And the day of that production, I want you to know that already there was some kind of grievance where she felt disrespected or felt undervalued, sort of. And the day of the production came and the other person, the new person invited said, look, I can't come to your location. You have to come to my studio. And we made provision of, okay, somebody go there. But this other lady still came. She still came. She had clients. She had business to handle. But she was like, no, I won't fail Yasmin today. I am going there. And she had other, you know, her staff telling her, you don't have to go. I thought she decided to bring this person on board. Let the person do it for her. And she said, no, I will go. I want to be part of that. I would go. I believe in what she's doing. I would go. I will be there. Now, loyalty is so deep that sometimes people think there is more to what's going on between you two. People think, it's, when it's a man, woman, it's even, it's it's so, so tricky for a man, woman, because the woman who's going to be with a man is going to be thinking that you have something with a man. But you guys are just loyal. You're so loyal that you like, nah, I'm loyal enough that 
I won't do this to this person. Even when this person messes up, that's where I'm going to, because that's the true test of loyalty. When you mess up and your friend is still saying, I won't do you the way you just did me. That's loyalty. Do you understand? Like, I won't act this way. No, no, no. You, you, you're wrong. I'm going to tell you something. You are wrong. But you see right now, right here, I won't do you bad. I will still love you. But after a period of time, that the conversation must have taken place happened and you feel this person is not ready to change off we'll talk about when to know it's gone <laughs> we'll talk about that and look it's not gonna work again so number four is honesty honesty is transparency honesty is transparency which is very hard especially for women yeah for women, it's very, very hard. We earned that transparent to ourselves. We earned that transparent to ourselves. That's why you find situations where one man can go through three friends or four friends. Yeah? Because everybody is keeping it a secret. Nobody wants to tell her friend, you know this person is asking me out now. I remember one funny situation when um, a, a man sent, uh, sent for me. He was walking with a colleague already and he asked that he wanted to see me and I showed up there and we got talking and he said a lot of things anyway. But I'm a woman, I'm a grown woman. I know when you're hating on me and he was practically hating on me. <laughs> he was practically hating on me. So I was like, all right, cool, mm, no problem. So that first day I gave him a benefit of doubt not to make anything out of what I, I, I perceived because he didn't say it. But I had that feeling. This was what he was driving at. But I, I just acted, you know, no problem. Let it go the first time. So the next time it happened, it was someone else's birthday. Another colleague of mine, a lady. And then uh, the other lady that was his friend, the original friend one. That was friend one. I was friend two. This lady was friend three. <laughs> so the friend one was not like, oh, yes, it's your birthday. I need to. So she was around that man. And then she told the man, she was like, oh, I need to pick something for somebody, you know, because today is our birthday. So the man was like, really? Okay, that's cool. Let me have a phone number. So that was how he got friend three's phone number <laughs> and bought a gift for her and stuff. So when friend one brought the gift to friend three, I was there. And friend one said, it's so so person that said we should give you this gift. So I was like, yeah, he's our friend, you know. So they gave her the gift and woo la la, the guy called. Oh, happy birthday, blah, 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 full stop. Then after some time, apparently rather, he called friend three, invited friend three out for a date. I don't know. But friend three was so busy that he told friend three, I want you to do a business. Like, let's have a business relationship. You know, do some work for me. I'm going to pay you and stuff like that. Friend three is like, oh, I'm all for business. I'm all for the money, okay? So pay me for the job you want me to do and I'll do it for you. He paid her. So already there was a link. There was this, comf she's comfortable now talking to him. There's this easy conversation. And I, and I really, we talk with this person. So one day, the person just out of the blue said, I want to have lunch with you, Yasmin. I'm a foodie. I love food. So when there's food, I lose my senses. <laughs> so when he invited me over for lunch, I went over for lunch. And when I got back for lunch, he outwardly said it that day. So when I got back, I just went to, you know, friend one's place. And I said, hey, what's up? How far? I, I'm just coming back from lunch with this person. Guess what this person is saying? That he likes me. And fair one was not like, what? Did he say that? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you understand? And then she was like, he is such a pig. I'm like, okay like you guys have something because i see you acting like you guys are brother sister so is there something going on like you know <laughs> and then she's like oh he's been trying to ask me out and I'm, I'm taking my time all right i'm like mm, okay that's so nice and then friend three is actually closer to me than friend one so friend three came to meet me later and then we got talking and i told her i said mm, i had lunch today somewhere the food is so tasty but that's not the tasty juice uh, the tasty juice is la 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 happen and then she was like are you serious that man is so funny do you know he said i should do something like this for him i did it for him he said he wants me to do this one do that was like are you serious and we laughed over it now because of me being open or my mouth rather be loose <laughs> now the three of us end up knowing the game he wanted playing 
the three of us we end up knowing that okay is, is this what oh man come on no you know and both of them were really nice friend three was like you know what i'm not talking to this man ever again and friend one is like he's disgusting but you trust me i'm the big mouth so <laughs> so the next time he called me i'm like you stop calling me because you're such a pig and he was like hello what are you talking about i said yes you getting too close to friend three you telling me friend two that you want me and already you talking to friend one about being your woman are you okay and i remember telling him something i said look i have done my research about him about about you and i just real and i realized that you're new to money so you're new to money you want to spend it and the money is you know you're misbehaving because you're new to money wait be rich for about five years be rich for more than five years your body will come to <laughs> your body will calm down and that was it so friends because uh, female friends rather women because we're not open we end up not being honest to ourselves and we end up going one man going through four five of us uh, and the, at the end of the day when we know about it we, we're so angry we're like oh i wish i had told you if i had told yes you need to be honest if you call that person your friend you need to be honest to that person when it's going down tell the person it's going down when it's black tell the person it's black if it's white it's white like I, I, don't, I still don't understand why people try to romance the truth. Would your friend beat you up? Would you, okay, let's say I'm your friend and I tell you something you don't like. Something you don't like meaning I tell you the truth about the situation and you don't like the way I came off, you know, telling the truth and all of that. Would you beat me up? The least you do is stop picking my calls, don't reply my messages and don't talk to me. And then maybe you calm down and we can talk. But then you're not going to beat me up because physical, you know, getting physical face, I hate that. But I know there's going to be fist exchange. I run away. It's just my mouth. Pa, 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 talk. But then I run when there's... Mm, mm. No, not at all. <laughs> all right. So that's number four. Number five is stay off the relationship. Yes. You want to keep that friend for so long? Stay off their men. Stay off their women. The boy, girl. Mm -mm. What a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband. Stay off. Stay off. Stay off. Don't see your friend's husband in a hotel with another girl and you go fight the man. Or you go fight your or you tell your friend it's crazy yo. don't fight the man don't fight the side chick you see and don't go telling your friend that oh yeah i saw your husband at the hotel he was doing hey hey don't do that shut up the best you could do if you have busybody spirit meaning you're so so restless about what you've said you could which i think is just going too far you could actually create a situation for your friend to see this thing herself or to see this thing, this whole thing himself. Or be ready to be the shock observer when you finally find out. And sometimes they never find out. Never found out. Uh, a, a big sister was just telling me about um, some lady she knows, her friend. And um, this big sis, she's in her early 40s. And she, she was telling me that there's this friend she knows that the friend, <laughs> the, the friend, it's so crazy that the friend husband has gone out with one of her employees. He didn't know that the girl he's going out with works for his wife's friend. He didn't know. <laughs> he didn't know. He didn't have an idea. But I guess the day he finally came to the girl's office to do something, pick her up. That was when he realized, oh, this business is owned by my wife's friend. And then the girl said, uh, so already like, uh, are you close to your madam? And the girl said, yes, so my madam knows about you. He was shocked that uh, she knows about me. She didn't tell my wife. She didn't. The man had the guts to walk up to her office. And she was like, ah, uh, uh, what's up now? How far? And the man sat down. She brought, you know drinks with him and then he's like cool and then he was trying to explain <laughs> explain like ah you know blah blah and i was like please so i hear nothing i see nothing don't get me involved please i hear see nothing don't ever get me involved i don't know anything and she said they've been her friend and this man have been married for i, th I think she was telling us more than 20 yeah she said they've been married for more than 20 years because her friend married really young and said she the sometimes when the friend talks about her husband how much confidence she has when her friend when her friend my mic is gone okay back it's back can i continue 
Yeah. And she said, years later, her friend still talks about my husband has never been with any woman except me. And then she, she tells her friend, you were lucky to have one of the good ones. I was looking at her, I was like, sis, what? She said, look, if you don't do that, if your friend knows, if you tell your friend, two things would happen. Is either the friend will come, her husband will convince her that it was not what it was and she will stay. Or she gets out. Would you want your friend to get out? Knowing your friend is happy there. I'm like, but he's cheating on her. She's like, your friend don't know. She doesn't know. Now, whatever you say will affect not just her marriage. In fact, even the children, both families. So wait, were you ordained as the announcer of catching cheetahs? What is your role? That made sense. It made sense. And you can keep your friends. Because once it goes wrong, it will affect your friendship. Your friend will not forgive you. Yes, even for telling her. Because she won't talk, she won't, she, she won't, especially women. For men, it's even different. A man will understand, yeah, well, guy, we can handle this. Thanks for watching my, you know, thanks for, you know, you got my back, man. Thank you. But for a chick, it's like, you made me get a divorce. Are you the reason I have a broken home? Are you the reason my marriage is like this? No. She says she doesn't say anything. That not just her, even her eldest sister's husband, that she knows, but she's like, I don't know anything. That she's very sure that the day her elder sister finds out that her husband has actually been with her, the woman will just kill herself. But she knows that it is not her place to talk. It is not her place to get involved in people's relationship. So that's a state of their relationship. State of their exes. Don't go dating their exes and say, oh, okay, because it didn't work with this one, it's going to work with me. Nah, stay. Stay off. If you want the friendship, you admire it, you love it, you want to keep it, you want to maintain it, please stay off their exes. Then issues, when you have problems, deal with the issues. Don't deal with the person. Don't say you're not a trustworthy person. No. What is the problem? What is the issue? Deal with the issue, not the personality, not the person. But when it happens over and again, you can, you know, begin to re-evaluate your relationship with this person and stay off friends, friends, friends. Okay, for instance, the producer of the show's name is Demage. Imagine I am friends with Demage's friend. I can't help it. If we're friends, someday Demage and his friend will have a problem. And then the friend, because we're friends, will want to gist me or tell me about the problem. And when they tell me about the problem, what's happening? We're beginning to gossip about the mage. And the mage is supposed to be my friend. So it's safer to keep, you have your friends, let them be your friends. I have my friend, let them be my own friends. Don't be doing all those friend friends. People are not doing interparty friendship. Stop doing that, okay? Because don't, don't go on a spa with your friend's friends. Don't go to a spa with your friend's friends. Or go shopping with your friend's friends. Or go to the salon with your friend's friends. Or you want to hang out or have some kind of vacation. No, you can't help it. Gossip will come. And once you start gossiping about your friend, it's not good at all. So when to let go of the friendship? When do you know that, hey, it is over between me and this person? There is no friendship we need to go. I remember seeing a video on Lala Anthony's, um, you know, page, Instagram, where she talked about friendship expiring. It's so true. I'll run through about nine to ten um, signs that your friendship is over. Number one, when the vibe is gone, the excitement is gone. The, hey, I want to see, I want to tell you this, pop, 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 it's gone. Number two, when you begin to feel like a pest to this person, you call them, they're like, look, I'm busy, I'm talking to you later. You know, they just don't entertain your calls again. And number three, of course, not entertain your call your calls being a pest being unwanted something like that why number three is when you feel unwelcomed or you go over to their office to their house you want to hang out with them and they are not comfortable with you and you also feel uncomfortable being around them you're not you're not welcomed at all what you do is um just know it's time to start preparing the funeral of that friendship when you feel now for you when you feel it's a burden to be someone's friend it's just too much Ah, it's too much. It's a burden. After, after hanging out with this person, I have a headache. I cry. I feel bad. They don't celebrate you, but they condemn. They complain. Ah, no. Once you feel it's a burden, it's too much. It's time to let it go. All right? And when you feel you have to monetize your friends. Good. That's a good one. Yeah. When you feel, oh, if I have to spend time with you, do you know how much I'll be making? If I spend 2,000 Naira, 2,000 Nigerian, you know, Naira on you, ah, hey, if it's someone else, is the person that will be spending that money on me. I beg, I beg. When you begin to monetize your friendship, monetize the time spent, monetize the things you do for your friends, meaning you're like, ah, if it's someone else, I'll get money. Spending time. Look, being friends with someone is sacrifice. That's it. It's never comfortable for anybody. 
never comfortable for anybody it's sacrifice if you're not ready to make that sacrifice you're not ready to have friends you're not ready to be in a friendship with anybody because you have to make sacrifice and people see you're ready to do this for them for them to do the same thing for you now when you can't start stand each other you don't stand what they you don't agree with what they stand in and you guys don't even agree to disagree or disagree to agree whatever it is you guys are always like you don't you can't stand each other you you don't believe in each other again for goodness sake why are you guys been friends you shouldn't be friends again and when your friend go as far as breaking the codes or you break the codes for instance the girls code friendship codes i don't know if the boys have codes but you end up breaking such codes it doesn't it doesn't make sense being friends again just let this person go and also have your own peace and then when the respect is not there when you feel you don't have the need to respect your friend or you feel your your friend do not respect you again it's time to let that friendship go now there's a time where you notice that this person is just friends with you to save appearances meaning people know you guys are friends and they just want to be around you so people don't know that they don't feel that thing again you would know you would know if it's just for appearances when it's not deep when there's no connection that chemistry is gone just like my number one when the vibe is gone you would know and when you know help that person and tell the person look i know just let's just take a break or don't even say anything just gradually withdraw yourself everybody will be fine last last we'll all be all right i'll be <laughs> and for you remember be the friend you want others to be to you my name is yasmin this is the restitution and we'll be back next time on the same channel make sure you subscribe have yourself a fantastic and fun a fabulous time bye bye